Baltimore Ravens, um, this offseason, uh, a little less than a week ago, they parted ways with a former head of strength and conditioning coach, Mr. Steve Saunders. Um, they decided they wanted to go in a different direction, uh, and they did just that. But a lot of people felt like it was just, it was too late. Like, that's something that they should have done a long time ago. Uh, if we go back to 2020, uh, we remember when it was said that Steve Saunders was the one that caused the big COVID outbreak. If y'all all, all, all remember back in 2020, because that thing was, it was one of the craziest things we have ever seen. Obviously, the whole year 2020 was one of the craziest years we've ever seen. But that, because we literally lost the whole team due to COVID. And they said that it was because of Steve Saunders. Apparently, I, I, I don't know if that's true or not. So we'll never know. But um, a lot of people felt like he should have been gone back then. So 2020 came and went. was just a weird year for everybody. Uh, then 2021, very promising looking year. The roster was looking, looking kind of nice overall. It was like, all right, let's go. Then one guy gets hurt. Then another guy gets hurt. Then another guy gets hurt. Then everybody, we lose the whole team to injury. So 2020, we lose the whole team to COVID. 2021, we lose the whole team to injury. So then 2022, last year. Mm. Started off promising, but then guys just started dropping. Then there were some guys that came back, but they apparently weren't healthy. And this was something that happened the previous year as well. And th there seems to be this reoccurring theme when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens and, and, and guys that's either coming back too early, they're not coming back the right way, and stuff has just been an issue. And my guy, David Najoku, not David Najoku, excuse me, Sam Najoku, um, Sam Najoku Sports on Twitter he, he said it best um, the other day And I, I should have pulled up the tweet But he talked about how the Ravens are obviously a well-respected organization um, So many people say they're they top five organization in the NFL da, da, da. Okay, cool But one of their biggest issues is they, they don't make the tough decisions fast enough They, they move too slow when, when it's time to change something They do not do it fast enough they don't do it with enough urgency and that is so true the Ravens could have an issue we could see the issue as fans that's why I always talk about you don't discredit what fans see but fans could see the issue like well this is an issue this is a problem this is a real problem and this problem is going to continue to cause problems for a long time so we will we want to get rid of the problem we want to get rid of the source that's causing all this stuff and Ravens will take their time they'll be like oh no we got it the problems will still happen. They'll take their time some more. Oh, no, we got it. The problems will still happen. They'll take some time some more. Oh. And then they finally get rid of it. And we're like, oh, that should have happened a long time ago. But anyway, um, Steve Saunders is not, he, he wasn't very popular. Well, he was popular in Baltimore, but not in a good way. Uh, and, of course, the, uh, the survey from the NFLPA that talked about the different branches of the organizations that talked about the treatment of families food service and nutrition the weight room strength coaches training room training staff locker room and team travel and it had players grade each of those things um their strength coaches got an f my not just not just an f but an f minus so they, they got worse than an f how do you fail how do you fail and get a minus on top of failing but anyway um some former players they chimed in and they talked about this. Now, we know Matt Judon a long time ago. Well, this I think it was this last year. He called out Steve. Um, and he put that, I think it was under the Deshaun Elliott tweet. Uh, he put hashtag fire Steve in, in reference to Steve Saunders. Uh, but anyway, um, Carl Davis. Y'all remember Carl Davis. I think he was a third round pick for the Ravens some years back. But anyway, um, he quote tweeted uh, the list of, of course, the, the, the Ravens grades that Cordell Woodland, shout out to Cordell, we got to have him on sometime. Um, but he tweeted out, he quote tweeted the, the list that Cordell put out uh, about the Ravens grades. And he said, I was definitely a victim of the strength coaches, two labrums and multiple pec strains. So he let it be known like, hey, like they got me. They messed me up. They like, no, nah, they, they were no good. Bam Bradley. Former linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. He said, five months post-ACL, unsuccessfully doing the same leg workouts as people with healthy knees never sits right with me. Ruined me. So these players letting it be known like their careers were absolutely altered by Ravens strength and conditioning team. 
And then Quincy out of Boyjo. I, I remember Quincy because um I remember we we did we did videos on him because he showed promise. He's a good route runner, but it was the injuries. That was the only thing that held him back. It was the injuries. And I'll never forget because I remember in his um in a retirement video that he posted on his Instagram. Um he actually used uh one of the videos that we made talking about him he used that in the video because we're talking about injuries it's the same thing there was a promise but the injury was just holding him back so shout out to quincy for using that in his uh retirement video so i appreciated that but anyway um he said definitely ruined my career three years season ending injuries in a row after being healthy my entire career prior that's so sad man that's sad to go out like that like three years straight like it's like all right if you've been especially if you've been healthy your whole career um and then you just start getting these injuries like one year you'll be oh, okay one year oh, a little fluky whatever okay it happened then the second year you could be like oh whoa, hold up now like what's 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 happening here but then the third year too oof, that's tough man well, anyway he continued he said rookie year training camp i suffered the same knee injury lamar had this year I was forced to practice three days later because I was a bubble guy. They cared less about treating me. So look at that. He said he had the same knee injury that Lamar had this year, but he was forced to practice since he was on the bubble. He wasn't a lock to make the roster. Then he said year two, I went through a full week of off-season training with the team just for a surprise text the day before rookie minicamp saying they wanted me to participate. 15 minutes into practice, I tear my quad completely off the bone. Everything went downhill from there. Let's just say it's never good when the training room and the strength coaches aren't on the same page. They didn't like each other, and it showed. Huge disconnect between the two, which led to multiple injuries for a lot of guys. No hard feelings, though. I still love Harps and the organization as a whole. Ha-ha. <laughs> I like how you put that little last part. So, mm, he let it be known, and I appreciated him breaking it down. I appreciated him sharing uh, his story when it came to that. Now, we've, of course, also heard Derek Wolf's story. Um, he let it be known he's not a fan of that team. But with something that Quincy said, which was pretty significant, talking about how they, they're not on the same page. That's scary. That's scary. If people that take care of these football players' health are not on the same page, well, that's not a good look at all. That's not a good look at all. And then, like, you think about guys who have been really healthy their whole careers, especially before getting into the league. You think about Rashad Bateman. Healthy. But now these past two years, he's, he's, he's missed time due to injury. Think about Lamar Jackson, who Quincy brought up. Been healthy, but these past two years missed time due to injury. And we know things happen. We're not going to act like, oh, yeah, every single player on every single team is always going to be healthy and every single injury can be avoided. No, uh-uh. But a lot of times, guys will show patterns. People will show patterns, whether it's through college, NFL, they, they, they'll show patterns. But Lamar ain't show no patterns in college. Rashad Bateman ain't show no patterns in college. Like, what, what, was, what was that about? See, with J.K. Dobbins, I would look at it differently because he had his injuries before. But guys like Lamar and Bateman and stuff, it's just concerning overall because you also think about, um, like we mentioned before, the guys that come back early when they come back too early and they're not ready yet. We, we've seen it with Ronnie Stanley. Like, what led the Ravens medical staff to believe that Ronnie, like last year, Ronnie Stanley was ready? This year with J.K. Dobbins. Because initially, he didn't look his best when he first came back. Then he had to get a cleanup surgery. And like, okay, boom. Then, then he, okay. He, oh, there he goes. All right, much better. But we've seen it a lot of times where they just feel like guys come back too early. And this just, I know he, he Quincy mentioned Lamar, so it just reminds me of the whole playoff game remember Vic Michael Vic oh Lamar put a brace on it put a brace on it so many fans calling Lamar a coward saying he quit on the team oh he could have played through that da, 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 da. this is why a lot of stuff that we just don't know like that we, we, we don't know like the whole we don't know thing it doesn't just apply to the contract situation we don't know nothing about that but a lot of the background when it comes to these injuries a lot of stuff that we just don't know and we don't even realize since we're not there in the training room we're not there in the locker room we're not there with the, the strength and conditioning staff so 
I just thought that these were some significant uh, announcements by these former Baltimore Ravens. Now, it would really be something if a current player called them out. Because that would be, oof. Because these former players are one thing. And, and what they say in it obviously holds a lot of weight. But if somebody who was on the staff, or on the team now, they called out, oh boy. But they, uh, I'm, I'm sure that won't happen because players want their jobs. And they don't want to be 